Okay. So a very good morning to everybody. And once again, uh, uh, welcome along to our Business Spotlight interview series. My name is Ron Maycock. I'm the owner of Business Performance UK and Action Coach Castleford. And I'm delighted this morning to be joined by Yomi Bancoli. Uh, hopefully I got the pronunciation pretty close. Um, so very good morning to you, Yomi. Morning, Ron. How are you? Hey. Yeah, very good. Very good. So Yomi is the owner and director of a business called Smart Shifts. And we're going to be hearing plenty more from Yomi in just a few moments. Uh, before we do that, though, I really wanted to explain what the purpose of these interviews are. So we're surrounded by some amazing businesses in our region. And they're each on their own journeys. And these uh, these interviews help them share those journeys, uh, showcase their achievements and ultimately maximize their exposure all in the name of abundance. And it's for the benefit of businesses right the way across the UK and increasingly internationally as well. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Yomi. Uh, Yomi, tell me a little bit more about uh, Smart Shifts. Um, Smart Shifts is a staffing and um, recruitment platform. So it's mm -hmm. basically a software as a service um, that provides services to local businesses uh, recruitment agencies and job seekers, so mm -hmm. people looking for work. Um, we've built a platform that allows businesses to be able to post out to the general public their on-demand needs of staff. A good example is a, a bar needs um, a waiter for between 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Mm -hmm. They can easily go on Smart Shifts and post that out. And put in how much they want to pay. So for us, we don't dictate how much the business pays the workers. The workers, the business yeah, yeah. has that sole responsibility. And then it goes out to all the workers on our platform that have registered as waiters. Yep. And whoever's interested picks that shift. But what we've done that makes us a bit different from every other platform is we've also allowed recruitment agencies onto our platform. Okay. So business can go on, sign a contract with a recruitment agency based on um, hourly pay rates. Mm -hmm. And if the agency is happy with it, they accept it. So whenever the business needs shift cover, all they need to do is just post out a shift. Okay. And, so in, and in, they select, let it go yeah. to, yep. Yeah. I was, I was going to say, so is, is it, in, in my understanding, and this, this might be an oversimplification of it, I guess, um, it's almost like an Uber for uh, for recruitment. It's it's more or less like an Uber for recruitment. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. So, in in terms of the the journey that you've been on to to get this platform up and up and running, what was your background? How did you get into this? Um, I've worked primarily in IT for a couple of years, quite a mm. lot, I'll say, uh, ten. Um, I've worked across government services and private sector, um, both within development and management roles. So I've been involved in quite a lot of projects like the census, building mm -hmm. the systems for the 2021 census, um, HMRC, DWP, Ministry of Justice, um, NHS, digital, and a host of other places like Barclays and other private industries. I've also had the experience of working as um, an agency staff while I was yeah. studying. Yeah. So, so, so I've got a good um, understanding of what freelance workers or agency workers go through. I've worked in factories, I've worked in healthcare. So I do, I do understand the complexity of being a job seeker at that stage. Um, that is basically my experience. So on this platform, I've, I've had both the role of designing the product and also doing a bit of software coding mm -hmm. to make it work effectively well. Excellent. And how long have you been doing it for then? When when did Smart Shifts come into existence? So I, I started the Smart Shifts project um, at the height of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So I, I started you know, putting up the ideas together. Um, I think halfway through it, there was a need to get invoice financing to kick off a recruitment agency. Yeah. And, and I just felt the interest rate was just too high. 
um, mm -hmm. it practically meant you're running a business for for the invoice finance firms. So I packed it up. Mm -hmm. um, but late last year, I, I came back to it. Mm -hmm. um, and it was a the need for international nurses trying to come into the UK was what brought it back to me. So I started rebuilding the platform. Um, and we just completed it mm -hmm. about weeks ago. Yep. So as of today, Smart Shifts has got 11,600 freelance workers across the UK and the US. Yep. Um, we launched about 10 days ago. We've got about five. I wouldn't know if any has joined this morning, but within the first two weeks, or yeah, they're about, we've had five recruitment agencies sign up with us. Mm -hmm. We're about to kick off marketing mm -hmm. um, this week. So that's where we are. And, and, and in terms of uh, direct clients as opposed to recruiters, what's the what's the mix in terms of recruiter to direct end user, um, but, but from the employer side of things? So with, with employer side, we, we work across certain industries, but we hope to scale across all industries. So healthcare, um, logistics, facilities management, hospitality, teaching and we're bringing in construction it's mm -hmm. almost industries work across the same module so we've not advertised to a single business and we've not even gone in touch with a single business yet mm -hmm. uh, what we've done was initially build the agency module which was which will be easier to use um, and connect it to the business module so Part of our plan as a uh, as a team is to create what we call a partnership program. Mm -hmm. So we want to use the general public to advertise the business. And what the partnership program means is a partner will register with us. It, anyone in the public, it could be a business, it could be the actual business themselves. You register as a partner, and once you sign up with a partner, we'll meet with you, we'll verify that you're a living person, not a robot, and then who will approve you based on our discussions with the partner. And on every shift that's covered by any business that a partner brings on to the platform, they will earn a commission. Mm -hmm. So our price is for every shift that's been covered, we charge £7.50 plus VAT. Mm -hmm. And out of that, £7.50 is a fixed fee. So it doesn't go up, it doesn't go down. We pay the partner £2. Yep. So, so on every with the the current model, then what's the commercialization of the business as it as it sort of moves forward? Who who pays for this? So is it the recruiter, or is it the candidate that's paying, or is it a combination of both? It's a combination of both that pays when when it comes to that. So what we've done is when an, a recruitment agency can bring their clients onto the platform. Mm -hmm. and a recruitment agency can come onto a platform and see clients that are there and send them a connection request. Yep. And then if they are happy, we charge recruitment agencies £60 plus VAT a month to use the platform. Mm -hmm. So what that gives a recruitment agency is a web and a mobile app yep. for, for, their admin and for their agency workers. It gives them and, and money presumably and that then gives them access to all of these eleven currently eleven and a half thousand candidates <laughs> that are actually on there across all different sort of sectors. It also gives the recruitment agency access to all those candidates, so they can yeah. use them um, if our staffs to cover those shifts. We don't charge the agencies; uh, we charge the commission fee for using the freelance worker. Yep. Which is basically one pound fifty plus VAT per shift. Per shift, okay, yeah, it yeah. It helps us cover administration. Yeah. So on the other side, if it's a business, the business will have a contract with an agency, so we have no connection in between their relationship. Uh -huh. It's everything is built into the system, so the way they relate, connect, invoice billing, 
So we provide automated invoicing and billing straight in for the agency and the business. So right. they, they transact business within their workspace. So you, you your, your platform is operating just as a platform. You're not getting involved with any form of payment to people doing the shifts. That's all done through the agency. And that's all and done through the can agency. outsource all of this without having to put people onto their own payroll. So could it could it be used by an end company? If they if they wanted shift workers but on a more permanent basis, could an end user so, use this to attract people to move from temporary or or you know uh, sort of ad hoc hours to a permanent position on shift work? So the way our system works, where we are a bit different from a traditional, where we are a platform is, of the 11,000 workers on our platform, employers can recruit anyone to become a permanent staff, no charge, mm -hmm. as long as that worker is interested in working for the employer. Yeah. So all the workers on the platform are available for employers. We have a module called Recruitment Campaign. So an employer can go into that module, create a job spec, and post it to all the workers within the community. And if anyone is interested, they can apply, you know, book interviews with the employer. We put it in there for them to be able to book interviews. They can assess the candidate and make a job offer. Mm -hmm. We are not involved in it. We don't stop any worker from being... Um, a worker is an independent an independent contractor so they can make a decision and we don't charge because they're not our worker right with regards so to your previous you, question i, I take it you're not doing um, any um eligibility and right to work checks that's still down to the recruiter oh we do we do all that yeah we do all that all right we okay provide that also to the agencies so we call it a compliance manager yeah so our system consistently monitors the right to work and their right to practice as a professional. So if you're a registered nurse, it will check your NMC, it will check your basic life support, your medication mm -hmm. um, assessment qualification. So every single one of them has got an expiry date. Smart Chips tracks those expiry dates. Right, okay. And if a worker's compliance is about to expire seven days before expiration, it will notify the worker. It will notify the agency. Or if it's an employer staff, it will notify the employer and tell them I'm going to stop this person from working 48 hours before their qualification or their right to work expires. Okay. So that means if that person has got any shift, we, after for, within that period, our system automatically cancel it and open it back to people that are compliant to do the job. Right. Um, so the, the the recruiters, I'm I'm just trying to think in terms of your future business and who you're looking to attract. This is a model that simplifies a lot of the compliance and governance that a recruiter would have to do for temporary workers, and actually yes. just automates this so that essentially that's what they're paying for is is this um system that makes their life easier and access to other other, other sort of candidates so is, there, is yeah. there any downside so if a recruiter um because if my my understanding would be that a recruiter with the old model the more traditional model of temporary recruitment will have people on their books that they technically employ and then subcontract out to an end client who actually wants them. So they do all That's the checks, they do all of this kind of thing. By having that person on the system, would, would they put their own people onto that system or onto your system, or would they keep that ring fence so that no other agency could tap into that as a resource. I'm just wondering, is there so, a... So in terms of the agency workers, so an agency would invite their own workers onto the system because that's the only way the, the workers can receive the shift directly on their mobile phone Yeah, through the app. So once they invite a worker, that worker is ring-fenced to that agency. Right, okay. So yeah, yeah. what we've done is we've created what we call a workspace. Mm-hmm. Each agency has its own workspace. 
So what happens is the workers of agency A cannot be seen by agency B. Yeah. The workers of agency A are not freelance workers unless they were previously pre freelance workers yeah. Yeah, yeah. on a platform before the agency invited them. No. So that's the way the system works. And if a business, a business can sign contracts with 20 agencies. Mm -hmm. So when they post a job out, they will specify where they wanted to go. So they could possibly go to all the 20 agencies at once. Yeah. At different rates of business. Each agency can only see the shift that's posted to them at the rate. So if agency A picks it first, yeah. the shift goes to agency A and their worker. Yeah, yeah. So it's first come, first serve. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it, and I guess it, it, is, it, it negates this if different agencies have got a different markup in terms of how much they charge over and above. Then actually, that's yes. that's sort of negating that. So, so you said that it's it's early stages, but you seem to have got some decent traction in terms of certainly in terms of the candidate base and also on some recruiters that have now signed up. So where's the big push? Are you looking for primarily more recruiters to come on board? Or are you looking for building the pool, the talent pool that is available, which will then draw in access to more recruiters? So what we want to do is, our, our initial focus right now is to bring in businesses. Mm -hmm. And we've decided to make the entry point very, very easy for businesses. So a business, we don't charge a business a penny for coming onto Smartshift. Mm -hmm. So it's free. Uh, unless you want to use the complex modules that we got, which is if you want to use our rotor system, yep. if you want to provide all your workers with the mobile app for them to be able to clock in, manage their annual leave, you can manage training of your workers on our system right. um, you can do your HR one-to-one -one objectives career objectives on the system now that comes at a cost mm -hmm. but we, we we believe most businesses will come there to manage agencies and to look for workers yeah yeah so that is as long as using only those modules it's free so our attention now is to get in more businesses and our marketing Strategy is to use the general public. So rather than us advertising solely to businesses, we'll be doing more of an advertisement to everyday people, creating a sort of passive income yep. for people to be a driver for them to reach out to businesses. It could be a company they work for um, to bring them on and then they can end that passive income. Because our mission is to create the, the biggest um, temporary work working platform mm -hmm. in the UK and US, and we want it to be primarily driven by people. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it becomes almost like a community hub, as opposed to it's just a a, a SaaS based offering or an app or or whatever. It you you generate in the community yes. that actually goes along with it. So, so what's the? I, I guess in the 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 sort of greater scheme of things you're, you're at the relatively early stages of, of the journey in terms yeah. of future development of the product is there a team is it primarily yourself are you outsourcing that areas you know what, what what's the business look like at the moment and and where do you see that sort of heading so in terms of of the future where we're going to it's been primarily me uh, doing most of the work initially, but I've got a development team mm -hmm. of four developers that, that work. Um, I don't have a marketing team, so I'm about to embark on a kind of angel investor, venture capital slash crowdfunding yeah. option to raise um, money in order to be able to bring those skills into the team. Mm -hmm. And primarily mm -hmm. most of the people that have signed up with us are from the United States. Right, okay. <laughs> um, which where is quite amazing. Where did, where did that sort of stem from? How did you 
have contacts over in the states or was this just put out on on a social media platform and they've jumped on board of it i so based on our seo search engine optimization yeah. we place if you're looking for temporary work so for most people they'll just go online and do a basic search there's possibility you'll find us on the first page despite that we're not paying google but we've done some smart things to make that work for us secondly in 2021 we placed out a couple of ads paid ads on facebook instagram and linkedin and we did that for about four weeks mm -hmm. and i think based uh, we've been having that continuous flow from that old adverts. Um, what we've discovered is some people are just telling the next person. Mm -hmm. And then from time to time, um, we just push out a cheeky post, maybe once in every two months, just to see, is there, while we were building the product, to see, are people interested in this? Yeah, yeah. yeah, so, yeah. And and then we saw the numbers coming in. Um, I'm sure if I check the system that we might have had up to 20 people sign up today. So we have an average of 10, 20 people minimum signing up every day. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it's been great in terms of, we believe that by the new year, we should have over 12,000 people yeah, yeah. on the platform. So it's growing, both in it's the growing, UK. It's growing rapidly. And as you say, if, it, if it's word of mouth marketing um where people see this as a, a benefit if it makes their life easier it's going to uh, sort of motor from there so what's the, what's the end goal where do you see this heading well where we where i see this going uh, or ending is i we want this to scale across a lot of countries probably mm -hmm. about 50 countries um we want to build a platform that's owned by the users of the platform, more or less. Mm -hmm. um, we want to empower people to be able to find jobs as easily as possible and to get paid within 24 to 48 hours. Mm -hmm. um, it's just providing that source of income for people that makes life easier for them. Yeah. So, in terms of numbers, because someone was asking last week, what are the numbers? I said, our plan is within the six, next six months, we want to get to a point that we have the minimum of 300 agencies on the platform. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of freelancer shifts that we have, we can cover close to 500 to 1,000 shifts a day. So we're getting 500 to 1,000 people into work every day. Um, across the UK and the US and within two years if we could get to a point that we have you know 3,000 to 5,000 people daily through the platform going to find work yeah, yeah. to complete shifts and and end something um, that is what we, we are doing um, the beauty of the platform again which is our objective is one of the People that came on and helped us in building the platform and in the very beginning was a teacher. And when he lost his job, you know, he got so bad to a point, he said, if I can find a cleaning job today, I will do it. Mm -hmm. and that is what we want to do in Smart Shift. So when you come into Smart Shift as a freelance worker, you can work across several industries as long as you are approved to work on it yeah, based yeah. on what is required. So you can do a cleaning job, you can do a warehouse job, can work in a care facility you can work in an hospital as long as you 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 know the basics of what you're going there to do then it's pretty simple we just want to make sure that no matter what circumstances people are you're never out of a job you're yeah. just one click yeah. off from this job yeah no and no, i think it's it's um a, a a very good way of having the purpose of your business based around making employment easier rather than more complicated there's there's lots of compliance there's lots of stuff that people have to do um yeah. but actually sourcing those opportunities and making it their choice um you often hear stories about people going 
you know, I, I I needed work. I'm willing to do it. And I'm just told, that, sorry, you're overqualified. Well, yeah. it's your choice to do that, that's fine. And that gives them access to, to stuff that they might be filtered out of by more traditional methods, shall we say. Um, so I can see that as a, a very good thing. So, and and it's, it's not, uh, time's sort of flying. So um, it, it is actually bringing us towards the end of the interview. Um, there's clearly exciting things happening um right now and you've got a plan for for over the next sort of six months seven months uh to get you to a a different place um are there any areas that we've not covered today yomi that you'd like to highlight that you think will help people understand the product and therefore engage with it a little bit more yeah some key areas is we've we've built a system to um evolve with time so we know there's a lot of things that we don't know. Um, there's a lot of things that we'll learn on the journey. So we're building it to, to evolve. Um, one of our key aims is to save a lot of businesses money mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, how much commissions they pay out to, to recruitment agencies and how much time is wasted trying to manage those engagements as well with agencies. Mm -hmm. So we are hoping that we can cut the costs down um, especially within the healthcare industry. It's a lot of healthcare providers, private healthcare providers are running out of business lately. And one of their main expense is human resource. Mm -hmm. So we will see, can we help them in that area to cut down their costs, to build a bank of freelance workers that can come and work for them you know, at a respectable pay. Mm -hmm. And that is our main main objectives. I think as a team, one key area that we need to work on is our marketing. Mm -hmm. um, because if you don't reach out to people, they won't know about the product, no matter how good it is. So that's an area whereby as, as a team, we're looking for a bit of mentorship and help, mm -hmm. and possibly coaching on the best ways. Even though we've designed possible ways of marketing, we still need people that are well-grounded in that yeah, it, and, and, it, yeah. and it, 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 yeah. it often happens with products or, or service offerings that have come from a technical background in terms of it's been developed or it's got a high scientific value or whatever it may be, where yeah. take, taking it from the logical connection of it really saves you money, the numbers stack up, it is more efficient to... You need to engage with this with your emotions rather than, you know, from a uh, purely from a logical side is actually a lot of what marketing is about. So you identifying that that is an area that you're going to need to support, you need to to develop, which will then enable the business to grow, I think, is a great, a great sort of ambition to to have. And as you say, it's going to be a learning journey. Um, it's not just going to be with a finished article on day one. You know, we've got some good traction, but it's a case of watch this space and, and see where it goes next. And that may help the, the product and the offering evolve as you start to learn certain nuances of different industries and things like that. So, yeah, fascinating. Yeah. Uh, it sounds like you, you've developed a, a, a very good offering that's come out of a need that, from a personal experiences, um, ticks some of the boxes in terms of overcoming frustrations from being a worker and also being a developer um and if we can combine those two then it's gonna it's gonna really fly so uh exciting times ahead um, um you know sounds uh, sounds like it's gonna be uh, a, a very fast-paced journey moving forward so so that does actually bring us towards it or to the end of the interview um so all that really remains i just really wanted to thank yomi for sharing um Thank you for being on uh, with us today, Yomi. So uh, thanks, Ron. Um, also, a uh, quick uh, sort of shout out: if anyone's watching this and you want to, uh, just like Yomi, record your own spotlight interview. If you want to highlight what's going on in your business, and or if you want to just get in touch with Yomi and find out can um, smart shifts actually work for you and your business, just get in touch. When we post these videos. 
various ways of how you can book in for your own or just get in touch just to find out more information and anything uh, that you're wanting to do on that sort of side will be more than happy to to engage with you and move it forward so as the final sort of sign off um um thanks for watching um, I'm